God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. President Lincoln not only understood the heartbreak of his country, he also understood the cost of sacrifice and reached out to console those in sorrow. In the fall of 1864, he learned that a widow had lost five sons in the Civil War, and he wrote her this letter. Dear Madam, I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you're the mother of five sons who ha have died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering to you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. The Bible tells us Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Ten years ago, America confronted one of our darkest nights. Mighty towers crumbled, black smoke billowed up from the Pentagon, airplane wreckage smoldered on a Pennsylvania field. Friends and neighbors, Sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, they were taken from us with a heartbreaking swiftness and cruelty. Today, it is worth remembering what has not changed. Our character as a nation has not changed. Our faith in God and in each other, that has not changed. Our belief in America, born of a timeless ideal that men and women should govern themselves, that all people are created equal and deserve the same freedom to determine their own destiny, that belief, through tests and trials, has only been strengthened. More than monuments, that will be the legacy of 9-11 a legacy of firefighters who walked into fire and soldiers who signed up to serve, of workers who raised new towers and citizens who faced down their private fears. 
most of all of children who realize the dreams of their parents. It will be said that we kept the faith, that we took a painful blow, and we emerged stronger than before. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. With a just God as our guide, let us honor those who've been lost. Let us rededicate ourselves to the ideals that define our nation. And let us look to the future with hearts full of hope. May God bless the memory of those we lost. And may God bless the United States of America.